Hi folks, this is Alan Watt. Tonight, I'm bowing to a little bit of pressure. I don't normally bow to any kind of pressure, but this will tie in with some of the talks I've given in the past. And it's about the culture creation industry, how ideas are downloaded into people's minds via fiction primarily using high drama high drama with emotion emotion plus crisis the situation in a movie and drama um, the tremendous method of getting uh, points across it's almost like coupling an idea with the drama and it's downloaded like a virus into your subconscious and you're being programmed and it's called predictive programming The technique is ancient and it's an old, old science. Plato, in his Republic, talks about the culture industry of his own day and how it was essential not only for maintaining control over the people by the elite, but that they had to control everything that was given to the public. In other words, anything the public saw in drama on stage was authorized. Not only was it authorized in ancient Greece, traveling troops of players would come into the cities and do the rounds and it was compulsory to attend. Everyone, even the slaves, had to attend at least one performance because just like today, they had their agenda and their schedule and their upgrading of the system and it was done primarily through fiction because the old saying is monkey see, monkey do and we emulate what we see, especially when it's done in a typical hero and heroine form. The male will project himself into the hero's part and identify with the hero character, and the female, at least in the old days, before uh, all the vast uh, estrogen stuff in their food and so on, and inoculations, the females used to um, look towards the heroine. This is an ancient, ancient science. It's never, ever given up. And actors are hereditary. The, the families in acting can go back probably hundreds, maybe some of them, some of them maybe thousands of years. Specialized sections of society, once more, and they marry each other and intermarry within even smaller ranks. And what's more in interesting is the producers, the, the magicians, you might say, who understand and have a full grasp of what is to be conveyed to the audience, what messages must be imprinted in them, in their minds. And he, is, he knows the techniques and how to do this perfectly, a perfect science. Now, what's interesting is that back in the 1960s, the Royal Institute of International Affairs and its American branch, Council on Foreign Relations, had one of their international meetings, they held it in England, to decide which country, using its film industry, would create the international culture of the future. And this was in the newspapers back then. And it was ultimately agreed upon that Hollywood would be given the job to create the worldwide culture for the general public, for a global society. And it would also be coupled with the music industry, obviously, because they go hand in glove, as Plato said, plus the fashion industry. Uh, Plato mentioned that too, and he called it the fashion industry in ancient Greece. Nothing, nothing, the more things change, the more they stay the same. And if something works, you don't want to change it. Why change it? formula of human behavior is just a science. Each part of the direction that you want to go into is just the ability to understand the formulas involved and then what buttons to push and what sequence. And if it's done in the right way, the right presentation, with the right propaganda, the public will react and do exactly as it's been programmed to do. It's worked in the past, it will work in the future. That's why they're, they're utterly, utterly confident 
that they can change society, even back to infant, uh, infanticide if they wish to, because they've done that in ancient Greece. So it was taught and, and practiced there. So anything can be reintroduced if it's been done in human society before. You just have to know the formula to introduce it. So Hollywood, this amazing industry, probably one of the biggest exports now, maybe the only one left in the U.S. apart from the military, uh, Hollywood is called the Hollywood, Holy Wood. The Holy Wood, of course, is a staff of, of the Magi, of the Magus, the Grand Magus in the occults. He waves a wand and everything is altered, changed. He casts a spell. And it's portrayed even in the cartoons with Mickey Mouse with his little wand. As he's dressed like the wizard. And little stars, five-pointed stars, come from the wand. Earth, air, fire, water, spirit, the five points. That's what it means. High drama. And in the ancient Middle Eastern legends, all the holy men there had their staff. Uh, we even find it in the Old Testament as the uh, Moses has the little contest with uh, the Pharaoh's Magi and they, they play it uh, changing sticks into snakes and back again, which is a good trick. But the trick of conducting a spell over the audience is by using a staff, the holy, the holy wood. The holy wood also, on another level, is the grove. Because in ancient times and in the present times, the bigger boys like to meet in specialized places across the planet in their holy groves. Uh, very, very important. There's much more to this even in, in Jewish folklore about the groves. And Moses' brass serpent that was called around the staff that had made uh, it's all allegory, of course, or something else, which I understand, but uh, supposedly it was placed in a grove surrounded by trees, and that was a special place for the, the higher magi to meet. To some movies will show you uh, the understanding within Hollywood, at least in the director's part. Many of the actors don't even understand it themselves, but the directors and producers certainly do. And some of the bigger ones are given the information and they're advised on how to get it across to the public. It's not that they have geniuses within Hollywood, per se. It's because their job is to program us as we go into the future, always. Hollywood has been an essential part of government, especially in the United States. There are, there are books out on Hollywood's involvement with making war movies. They churned out, I don't know how many war movies in World War II. And they had the full cooperation of the American military and the use of all oh, squadrons of tanks and ships and everything to make it very, very realistic to get the recruitment going uh, to fight the Nazis and then the Japanese. Tremendous part of propaganda and it's never stopped, and even today the Pentagon admits they have funded some of the bigger movies to do with war and Jarhead and all this kind of nonsense to get the young guys in for recruits. The movie industry is there to indoctrinate you into possibilities which you swallow as possibilities, and then they actually come out in reality. Major fire, this technique has been used very effectively since the BBC, in fact, first started up as a radio station for World War I, and they used plays and dramas and, and serials, serial forms, so that you could chew them every day to get the next part of the exciting story. And it always made sure that it was a, a cliffhanger at the end of the hour. And then, sure enough, everyone tuned in, in the, next, the next day at the right time to get the next part of the story. But in amongst the drama, they were having, they were getting propaganda to do with World War One and why the young guys should join up and, and, and how much they'd be respected by the, the women and uh, they'd be heroes. And the, you know, this is how the, the technique is, is used upon the young people's minds. That's why they don't use older guys in the military. 
except for generals and so on. Young, young guys think they're immortal. They want, because of the tribal instinct within them, they want to be a hero. They want to stand out and, and save the tribe. That's what sports are portraying too. That which you see in a movie form becomes acceptable subconsciously, so that when it comes in reality, you don't react to it. You're, you're familiarized with the idea. And in the movie, of course, it's always presented as a necessity. And in other words, all the, all the bugs have been ironed out subconsciously in your mind for you. It's been downloaded into you, the whole, the whole idea and why it's done. So, this is Hollywood. I'd buy that for a dollar. <laughs>